the night I converted, actually, there was a Senegali teacher that grabbed me, mm -hmm. who was the Imam of the Masjid, and he spoke Wolof. He didn't speak a lot of English. He spoke Arabic, and he was like, "I'll see you on Tuesday." Tuesday, he's like, "Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna start learning on Tuesday." So we're we're all the product of people who believed in us, man, mm -hmm. to, to a certain degree, right? And Allah Subhanahu wa is our Razak. وَالَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ and uh, you know that that brother, Sheikh Ahmed and Di from Senegal, he believed in me, man. you know. And and to be honest with you, the, the crisis of manhood in America, whether it's like toxic masculinity or the opposite, where men, there's a great book called The War on Boys. You know, to be and I didn't have a great relationship with my, with my father, so to have this like you know he was like Gandalf, you know what I mean? Like, he's like this holy figure. To say like I believe in you, uh, I think was very powerful. And then like, so I memorized just Amma in two weeks. And then he told me, he's like, you know, you should memorize the Quran. And I was like, I can memorize the Quran. I can memorize Quran. How can I memorize the Quran? I was like, I'm. I'm Do you memorize Quran. it when you didn't speak Arabic? You memorize just Amma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not so sure. then I, he said, I used to he used to listen to it so much. And then he was like, I mean, trust me, I've seen this before. You know what I mean? You can memorize the Quran. So like, I, I think it's very important, no matter what you talk about, how do we heal people from trauma? Is imagine being the Sahaba and the Prophet having confidence in you. I mean, that's really one of the stories of, of the, the role of the Murabbi is to give people measured doses of confidence so that they can, you know, how, how did that how did that seed grow? They said the Zara is Muhammad Ali Salatu Salam or the Quran or both. And then what came out of it? So imagine being the people who heard Radiallahu Anhu Warabu. Like imagine hearing that. And being like a a former qata tariq, being a former like highway robber like Abu Dhar, and you hear Radiallahu Anhu Maraduan. Being someone who was completely in Kenumin Qabrullah fi Dalar in Mubi. Right, so we can probably talk about it later, but confidence and love are seen in Islam as a res as restorative and recessive and key to people. And that's why I believe one of the goals of po a post-colonial world, and in particular, uh, I don't like to call it Islamophobia, man. Muslim hatred, right? Commodified Muslim hatred is to make us hate each other. And there's a lot to learn from the black church on this issue. Black church, the black church in America frames black love as a fundamental condition for black healing in the mm -hmm. face of white supremacy. Muslims, we don't even love each other. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I am the product of love. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I'm the, I, my teacher, you sit me for every day. I mean, how many people can you sit with and study with for two hours? You don't pay them anything. How, who does that? Who does it? So a lot of times these mashaykh and these imams and these maulanas, people make fun of them, but they're with people and they're not charging tu tutoring costs, right? The good ones, the majority. So I'm very much the product of like, Sheikh Abdurrahman al Basir, right, who I took Shahada with. I mean, imagine he mouthed a man, mouthed the Shahada to you. When you convert, someone is mouthing it like you're a baby. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, you know, it's like, Baba, Baba, Mama, Mama, right? You're the product of love. To be a convert in, in that setting, you know, is to be the product of a lot of care. And then a lot of my friends, we became Muslim together. We're all ex, you know, ex uh, street boys. So, we were able to support each other. And that was very important in my own development because like my one of my best friends, the night he became Muslim, right? I take, we used to have this thing called detox where we take you to the mosque for like the first weekend of your Shahada, you have to go spend the night in a mosque. So we like, we had a program. You check in on Friday night, you get, you learn how to make wudu on Friday night, you learn how to pray Saturday morning, and then you pray until Sunday. So by the time Sunday Maghrib happens, you know how to pray. You know how to make wudu, you know how to pray. So his first wudu, he reaches in his pocket, he pulls out a bag of marijuana. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And he's like, man, 
you know, do you think we can just do like one last, one last go, man? And I said, you know, and I saw this brother flush that like at least $500 worth of marijuana down the toilet. So having a group of friends who also were coming from very similar circumstances equipped us also with kind of how to deal with people. You know what I mean? So, so the early, early iterations of Islam before Egypt and all that is really being met with and, and the Pakistani community there, man. You know, really took care of all of us uh, and, and encouraged us. So, and, and my parents, you know, initially were scared to death. You know, when I converted, they were scared to death. But by the end of it, my mother was buying halal meat, man. She's like, I'm trying to learn how to make this Nahari. What's Nahari? <laughs>